Okay, friends, we, let's continue reading about Flat Stanley. Chapter 3, Stanley the Kite. Mr. Lambchop had always liked to take the boys out with him on Sunday afternoons to a museum or roller skating in the park. But it was difficult when they were crossing streets or moving around in crowds. Stanley and Arthur would often be jostled from his side, and Miss, Mr. Lambchop worried about... speeding taxis, or that hurrying people might accidentally knock them down. It was easier after Stanley got flat. Mr. Lambchop discovered that he could roll Stanley up without hurting him at all. He would tie a piece of string around Stanley to keep him from unrolling and make a little loop in the string for himself. It was as simple as carrying a parcel. Then he could hold on to Arthur with the other hand. Stanley did not, not mind being carried because he had never much liked to walk. Arthur didn't like to walk either, but he had to. It made him mad. Let's look at Arthur's face. Mad. How does Stanley feel? <laughs> Pretty happy. On Sunday afternoon in the street, they met Ralph Jones, an old college friend of Mr. Lambchop's. Well, George, I see you have bought some wallpaper, Mr. Jones said. Going to decorate your house, I suppose. Wallpaper, said Mr. Lambchop. Oh, no, this is my son, Stanley. He undid the string and Stanley unrolled. How do you do, Stanley said. Nice to meet you, young feller, the man s said. George, he said to Mr. Lambchop, that boy is flat. Smart, too, Mr. Lambchop said. Stanley is third from the top of his class at school. Phooey, said Arthur. This is my younger son, Arthur, Mr. Lambchop said. And he will apologize for his rudeness. Uh-oh. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Arthur could only blush and apologize. Mr. Lambchop rolled Stanley up again, and they set out for home. It rained quite hard while they were on the way. Stanley, of course, hardly got wet at all, just around the edges, but Arthur got soaked. Late that night, Mr. and Miss Lambchop heard a noise out in the living room. They found Arthur lying flat on the floor near the bookcase. He had piled a great many volumes of encyclopedias on top of himself. Put some more on me, Arthur said. Hmm, let's infer. Why was Arthur saying that? Why did he want to be flat? Well, we know that his brother's flat. We know that he wants to do things that his brother could do. So why would he put books on himself? Oh, no. When he saw them, don't just stand there. Help me. Mr. and Miss Lambchop sent him back to bed. But the next morning, they spoke to Stanley. Arthur can't help being jealous, they said. Be nice to him. You're his big brother after all. Next Saturday, next Sunday, Stanley and Arthur went to the park by themselves. The day was sunny, but windy too. And many older boys were flying beautiful, enormous kites with long tails made in all colors of the rainbow. Arthur sighed. Some day, he said, I will have a big kite and I will win a kite flying contest and be famous like everyone else. Nobody knows who I am these days. Stanley remembered what his parents had said. They went to a boy whose kite was broken and borrowed a large spool of string. You can find me, Arthur, he said. Come on. He attached the string to himself and gave Arthur the spool on hold. He ran lightly across the grass, sideways to get up speed. Then he turned to meet the breeze. Up, 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 went Stanley, being a kite. He knew just how to manage on the gust of wind. He, fa he faced full onto the wind if he wanted to rise, and he let it take him from behind when he wanted to speed. He had only to turn his thin edge to the wind carefully a little at a time so that it did not hold him. And then he would slip 
gracefully down towards earth again. Arthur let out all of the string, and Stanley soared high above the trees, a beautiful sight in his red shirt and blue trousers against the pale blue sky. Everyone in the park stood still to watch. Stanley swooped right and then left in long, matched swoops. He held his arms by his sides and zoomed at the ground like a rocket and curved up towards the sun. He side-slipped and circled and made figure eights and crosses and, and a star. Nobody has ever flown the way Stanley Lambchop flew that day. Probably no one ever will again. After a while, of course, people grew tired of watching, and Stanley got tired of running about with the empty stool. Stanley went right on through showing off. Three boys came up to Arthur and invited him to join them for a hot dog and some soda pop. Arthur left the spool wedged in the fork of a tree. He did not notice while he was eating the hot dog that the wind was blowing the string and... Tangling it about the tree. Oh no. The string got shorter and shorter and Stanley did not realize how low he was until leaves brushed his feet. And then it was too late. He got stuck in the branches. Fifteen minutes passed before Arthur and the other boys heard his cries and climbed up to set him free. Stanley would not speak to his brother that evening and at bedtime even Arthur had apologized. He was still cross. Alone with Mr. Lambchop in the living room, Miss Lambchop sighed and shook her head. You are at the office all day having fun, he, she said. You don't realize what I go through with these boys. They're very difficult. Kids are like that, Mr. Lambchop said. Phases, be patient, dear. Chapter 4. So, friends, in Chapter 3, have you been ever been jealous of a friend or sister or brother? Why? How did you overcome this jealousy?